So welcome to Sunday morning yoga. For today's class, you're gonna need the usual stuff, a nice clear area, a couple of yoga mats if you have them, your belt, your blocks, your open mind, your sense of humor, and maybe some padding. We are going to start down in child's pose. So I'm gonna turn sideways. You might be more comfortable orienting yourself to look at the screen so you don't have to turn your head sideways to see what's going on. But I'm gonna turn myself sideways so that you can see in child's pose, I am trying to get my butt down on my heels. I'm trying to sit down heavy. My big toes are together. My knees are apart, not as wide apart as the mat. I'm trying to keep my hips down on my heels. But when I just come into my child's pose and kind of collapse into it, this is what tends to happen for me at least. My hips fly up into the air. So if you're like me and you come into child's pose, and rather than being in a curled up Volkswagen bug type of position, you are more of a stink bug with your hips high in the air, you're going to have to modify your pose and use some toys or use some effort to keep those hips back on your heels. And one modification you can make is to take your blocks and stack them up. Or if you don't have blocks, you can use your fists, one potato, two potato. And put that third eye, that third potato on that stack of fists or on the edge of your blocks. Just to elevate your head, support your head so that your hips can shift back towards your heels a little bit more. You don't have any toys at all. Or if the fist stack isn't enough for you, you can also push your hands into the ground and dramatically round your back to back those hips up to your heels. Pressing your hands into the floor to back your hips up to your heels. So that's how to get your hips towards your heels. Now, if your other complaint is that your knees just don't bend, well, you can fill the gap, put a little something behind your knees into your knee pits to keep those knees from closing all the way. And also brings your heels closer to your hips. So you're more likely to keep your hips back on those heels. One more modification. We could spend all day long modifying this one little pose. But one more modification you can make is if your ankles don't bend, if you don't have ballerina feet, is to take your pillow, a second or third pillow, whatever you need, to put something underneath your shins so that your ankles can hang off. And that way your ankles aren't forced to go flat if they don't bend that way. So get yourself all set up in that Cadillac ultra supported version of child's pose and join me. Take the extra 30 seconds to set this up, run and go get your toys so that you can be in this pose comfortably for a little bit. And then turning your attention inward, closing your eyes, observe your breath. Let your breath come in and out through your nose. And use your breath to massage your back. Let your shoulders widen apart. Maybe elbows go wider apart. Maybe you stretch your arms out in front or sweep your hands back by your heels. You do whatever you want to do with your arms so that that space between your shoulder blades opens up. You're giving yourself a back massage from the inside out using your breath. Direct that breath into your back ribs. Observing what that bra band area feels like today. Observing what your back waistband feels like today.
and breathing from head to tail, from the top of your head all the way down to the tip of your tail, how your back body feels this morning. Let your head be heavy. Press your hands into the ground and slowly crawl your hands up your lap to come sit. Now you can sit back on your heels if your knees bend that way, if it's comfortable for you or find an alternative way to sit. You might sit cross-legged, you might sit on a couple of stacked blocks. Just sit somehow, some way, sit comfortably. Again, you do you and I'll do me. Have a seat. Sit on enough stuff, sit up nice and tall so that your arms can be free at your sides. Take a great big inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. And exhale, press your breath out. Turn your palms forward, take a shoulder shrug, inhaling up. And exhale back and down. Inhale, sweep both arms up and overhead. And exhale, release. Palms are forward for a shoulder shrug, inhaling up. And exhale back and down. Keeping those shoulders down, interlace your fingers, press your palms out. You're gonna tuck your chin, tuck your front ribs, pull your belly in as you press the palms of your hands forward. And again, lean into that spot between your shoulder blades, pulling your belly in, tucking your chin, even tucking your tail a little bit. You'll notice that I'm shifting side to side here. I'm trying to get that space between the shoulder blades to open up a little bit more. So with that rounded back that you had in your child's pose. Again, this can be a simple cross-legged sit. It can be a straight-legged sit. It can be sitting back on your heels, whatever works for you. The concentration, the emphasis here is in the upper back, space between your shoulder blades. And then lift your head up and flip your hands over. Notice the weave of your fingers, which fingers on top. You're going to reweave your fingers, interlace your fingers the other way so they feel funky. So the other index fingers on top. And again, press your palms out, pull your belly in, tuck your tail, tuck your chin, rounding your back. And maybe shifting a little bit side to side. With a big inhale, sit up tall, sweep those arms back, clasp your hands together, interlace your fingers behind your back and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Feel your shirt split open across your chest. Pull your tummy in, put your head on straight and level and breathe. Shoulders melting down away from your ears. Maybe even tick-tock your head side to side, make sure there's good distance between your ears and your shoulders. And release. Palms are forward for a shoulder shrug up. Back and down. Inhale, take both arms up and overhead. Interlace your fingers, turn your palms up towards the sky. Lift those ribs, lift your shoulders, lift your armpits all the way up to your ears and feel how choky that feels in your neck and how that's not comfortable. So try keeping this length in your body, but let those shoulders pull down. Grow your neck a little bit longer. Still pressing up through your thumbs, pulling back through your pinky fingers. Sink those armpits down away from your ears, sitting upright and tall. And breathe. Now locate your right hand, leave it in the air as you release your left hand down to your side. I still have my palm turned up towards the ceiling, just opening up the underside of the arm a little bit more as I tip over into a side stretch. So my palm is up for this one. Lengthening out through the pinky finger, I'm only pulling back through that pinky finger, turning to look up past that top armpit. And with an inhale, come all the way up and release. Inhale, take both arms up and overhead, interlace your fingers, turn your palms up towards the sky, up towards the ceiling. Once again, lifting those armpit shoulders up around your ears, nice and long. 
And then as you exhale, pull those armpits down. Keep that length in your spine. Palms are turned up, thumbs are pressing up, pinky fingers pulling back, armpits are open. Now this right hand releases down. Left palm is up towards the ceiling still. As you press up and come on over. Turning your chest towards the sky. And release. All right, I've been here for a while, so I'm going to bail out of this. Please join me coming over onto hands and knees. Curl your toes under. If you need some padding underneath your knees, go ahead, put it in place. Go on, chickens. Toes curled under, stretching the undersides of your feet, hands beneath your shoulders. Inhale, lift your head up, tail up into your sway back to cow. And exhale, arch your back to cat. Inhale for cow. And exhale for cat. About two more, just like that, smooth and steady. Inhaling for cow. And exhaling for cat. And then you can untuck your toes and sit back over your heels for just a moment. A moment ago, we had our fingers interlaced, our arms overhead. You found the pinky finger side of the arm. You had your pinky finger pressed up towards the sky and you came in over into a side stretch. The outer edge of the arm, the pinky finger blade edge of your arm, right where that line between the tan part and the not so tan part, that line, that delineation between the tricep and the bicep, you're gonna find that side line. It goes all the way down the side of your body like a racing stretch. You're gonna locate that side line. You're gonna to come to this, uh, this uh, hands and knees position. Hands will stay flat on the floor, but you're going to rotate your arms. That's what it looks like from the side view. Front on, it looks like this. I'm rotating my arms. I'm showing you my elbow pits, and then I'm showing you my elbow points, the points of my elbows. So rotating the arms without moving the hands. Finding that side line. Imagine it was ticklish, that might help. I'm gonna inhale, come into your cow and flare those side lines forward. You're gonna rotate your arms so that the points of your elbows shine forward. Your pocket's got the callus on it, the pointy edge, shining forward. And then when you exhale, come into that cat pose, imagine somebody came along to tickle you along that side line and you're gonna close it in, narrow. Swing your elbow pits to face forward, even swing your elbows in narrow towards one another when you come into your cow pose. So as you exhale, come into cat, show me your side lines. And as you inhale, come into your cow, close down. Inhale, cat, sorry, <laughs> exhale, cat. And inhale, cow. And work it. Letting those shoulder blades move on your back. Coming into that cow, armpits get tickled. Coming into your cat, armpits flare open. Rotating those arm bones in the shoulder joints as you move, alternating cat and cow. And finally, once again, untuck your toes, sit back over your heels, stretch your arms out in front of you, patting underneath your knees if you need it. Arms stretch out in front. Notice I'm up on my fingertips. I encourage you to do the same. Back your hips up to your heels, come up onto fingertips, walk both hands over to the right. That side line through the left side of your body is exposed, it's open right now. Now leave this right hand on the floor and with an inhale, lift open like a clamshell at the bottom of an aquarium fish tank. Open, open, open. 
And then as you exhale, close that sideline, that pinky finger blade edge of your body down towards the ground. Inhale, open, open, open. And exhale, close down. And keep going. Try keeping your hips back on your heels the entire time. So this right hand on the floor stays anchored. Press it down into the floor. Helps you keep those hips stapled back on your heels. As you open and close. If it works for you, you can take the top palm, turn it up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, close it down towards the floor. But you want to rotate more than just the hand. You want the entire side body to open and expand and stretch. And then as you exhale, curl inward, close down. We'll do one more on this side. And walk both hands all the way over to the other side. Keep those hips stapled back on your heels. Left hand stays on the ground. Inhale, breathing into that right side body. Big breast. Let your fingers spread. And again, if it works for you to turn your palm up and then palm down, let the action be more in your torso, a little less in your hand. Your hand is just kind of like this. What are you doing, chicken? Go on. <laughs> let your feathers spread. <laughs> And come on to center. All right. Again, I'm turning sideways. You're probably better oriented towards the screen. Some padding underneath your knees recommended. Let's take a stretch. You're going to step forward with your right foot. Come into a nice lunge. I've got my back toes pointed for this one. I'm inching this front foot forward enough so that the toes stick out past my knee. And I'm using up pretty much this entire yoga mat. And then rock back on the front heel, peeling up the toes, sticking out your booty, bowing forward. Shifting forward, coming back into that lunge. So you're opening up the front of that left hip. And when you rock back, you're stretching the back of the right leg. If this feels really wobbly or unsteady, you're not feeling very flexible this morning and also have blocks underneath your hands to help you control the whole situation. And shift forward. And I'm gonna challenge you to switch sides without using your hands. Work on that mobility, agility, switching sides. Nice long, low lunge. And then rocking back. Peeling up the toes. Rocking back and forth a couple more times here. The lower you are to the floor, the easier it is to control. Which means, of course, we're going to switch sides again, go back to that first side, and we're going to challenge you to make it a little bit more compact, a little bit more upright, and to come into what I call proposal pose. All your weight's down on one knee, and it's more of right angles and right angles. Rather than getting into a nice deep lunge, it's more upright proposal pose. And in this proposal pose, you take your arms up and overhead. Pulling in that tummy as you exhale, pull that tummy in tight. Do a little pelvic thrust. Feel that good stretch in the front of the hip. Inhale, stretch long and tall. And as you exhale, do a little bit more pelvic thrust, pulling up that tummy, 
tucking your tail under. Inhale, stretch long and tall. And one more time, exhale, pelvic thrust like you mean it. Maintain this abdominal control, that good feeling of stretch in the front of the hip and shift forward. Maybe your knee does go past the big toe. Tummy is strong to help you balance. A couple of blocks nearby just in case. And back it up. Rocking back on the front heel, you might come a little bit lower sitting down on the back foot. Coming on it. Take that momentary proposal pose, arms come up and overhead. Exhale, pelvic thrust, shifting forward. This is more of an Anjanyasana, the more intermediate version of the yoga lunge through the knee goes past the big toe, intermediate version. And then again, hands free if you can, bowing forward. Sitting back on your heel. Inhale, come on up. One more time, taking those arms up and overhead. <sighs> Exhale, pelvic thrust, very important. Abs are strong, good, strong stretch as you get into your more upright, intermediate version on Janyasana variation. And final time, back it up. Bow forward over that straight leg. Using the blocks as necessary. And then of course, I challenge you, I dare you to switch sides, hands free. Coming into this proposal pose, all your weights down on one knee, 90 at the front knee, 90 at the back knee, a much more upright pose. Inhale, arms come up. <sighs> Exhale, pelvic thrust, strong abs, shifting forward. You'll get that Achilles tendon on the back of the ankle to stretch. Rocking back on the front heel, heeling the toes up, using those blocks as necessary, shifting your weight back. The distance between the front foot and the back foot doesn't change. Coming forward, staying upright, lunging forward. Shifting back, you can reach your arms out, a little bit more of a lower back stretch here, along with your hamstring stretch, using those blocks as necessary for balance. And again, inhaling, coming on up. Exhale, abs are strong. Coming into your intermediate variation on Anjanyasana. And release. Okay, have those blocks positioned at the end of your mat. And I dare you, I challenge you to come on up to standing without using your hands. Shake a leg or two. Again, you might be better off orienting towards your screen just so you can see what's going on without having to turn your head sideways. But I'm gonna do this sideways so that you can see that I'm taking a giant step back with my right foot. I encourage you to do the same. Big step back, Woo. go long. Hands come on the blocks. We're gonna wiggle the front foot wider, maybe hop the back foot wider. Think opposite diagonal corners of your mat. We got one foot on this edge, one foot on that edge. Hands on blocks beneath your shoulders as you start to pull the front leg straight. Back heel stretches straight back towards the ground. It might not touch down. You're cheating yourself if you just let that back foot flop inward. Pick that inner heel up and stretch it back. Swing that back heel wide. You get a more um, effective calf muscle stretch on that back leg. This is pyramid pose. Bunch of straight lines here if you can get it to happen. Pulling in your tummy, tucking your tail to help you straighten the legs. 
The more you pull in your tummy, press your hands into the ground, do that child's pose variation with your spine, the more likely you are to one day staple both heels down to the floor. So if you can't get the leg straight, think about pulling that tummy in around your back. You can press your hands into blocks, do a dramatic cat pose with your back, that child's pose like positioning to help press weight into that back heel. If you can get that back heel down, then you can work on flipping your buns up towards the sun, stick your butt out, keeping the legs straight. And that will allow you to flatten your back. All right, you're gonna let the front knee bend. Back heel can float high into the sky. Front knee is bent. I'm gonna drop my blocks for just a moment. Shrug those shoulders onto your back and with an inhale, sweep your arms up alongside your ears. Help you find your balance behind your tummy. As you exhale, pull that tummy in. A big pelvic thrust tilt, pulling that tummy in strong to help stabilize your midsection. Arms are alongside your ears. Crescent lunge. If your back heel's lifted, it's called a crescent lunge. Hinging over, keeping that tummy strong. Once again, coming into that pyramid pose. Hands on blocks if you need them. Back heel stretching, inner heel, back heel stretching back. So the beginner's version is with back rounded tail tuck, trying to staple that back heel to the floor. The intermediate version is you're perking up your butt, sticking your butt out, but keeping your heel down. Front knee bends, releasing those arms, shrugging those shoulders onto your back, lifting yourself upright, crescent lunge. Activating those abs, tummy is strong, doing that pelvic thrust tilt. Arms alongside your ears. Big stretch. And release. Again, hands can come to blocks. Step forward, step back. Let's switch sides. Pyramid pose. Inner heel, stretching straight back on both feet. Front knee bends, shrug your shoulders onto your back, sweeping your arms up alongside your ears, making sure your abs are strong, tail is tucked under. Chest is upright, crescent lunge back, heel can be lifted. Returning to that pyramid pose. Let's transition into a wide-legged forward fold. So that might just mean you walk your hands off to one side or you rearrange the whole situation so that you find yourself in a wide straddle forward fold. Toes turn in, heels kick out, bowing forward between your legs. Let your hands touch something. They can touch the floor, they can touch blocks. If your arms are so long that you can put your elbows down on blocks, go ahead, or maybe put your elbows down on the floor. Same technique. If you're having a difficult time getting your legs straight, think about pulling in your tummy, tucking your tail. 
doing your best child's pose, cat pose with your back. If you can get your heels down, heels out, toes in, heels out. If you can get your heels down and you can straighten your legs and you want even more stretch, then you flip your buns up towards the sun. You stick out your butt. Keep those knees from locking. Knees are so unlocked the entire time. Even when you're going for more hamstring stretch, you stick out your butt. You keep those knees unlocked. Unlock your knees, hands come onto your lap. Your hands are on your thighs. Your hands are touching your lap. Come all the way up to standing and take a moment to step your legs together. And you can shake your legs up. We're gonna come into that straddle, that forward fold again. But I wanted to point out that these are your quadriceps on the front and these are the hamstrings on the back. Your muscles are arranged in pairs, counter pose, uh, competing pairs of muscles. So when your brain sends signals to your quadriceps to fire, to shorten, to tighten, it sends no signal to the hamstrings. Because if your brain was telling both muscles to fire at the same time, you would be in tetanus. That's not what you want to have happen. So your brain only sends electrical impulses that tell the muscles to fire. It does not send a signal to relax. You can think it, but it doesn't actually happen. What you can have actually happen, what you do have control over is telling those muscles to contract. So when you tell your quadriceps to contract, the muscles on the backs of your thighs, your hamstrings are receiving no electrical impulse to fire and therefore they can passively release. So we're gonna come into this wide leg of forward fold and we're gonna work on trying to stretch those hamstrings even more by engaging the quadriceps on the front. Knees are unlocked, you're gonna activate those front thigh muscles. Hands come to the top of the thighs, toes turn in, heels turn out. And you can run your hands down the front of your thighs. Make sure those muscles are nice and strong. As you press your inner thighs back, let your heels flare. Feel that those quadricep muscles are engaged as you come into that forward fold. Leave those quadricep muscles working as you transfer your hands back down to the ground. Let your head hang. Hands can be on the floor, hands can be on blocks. Maybe your elbows can come to blocks, maybe your elbows can come to the floor. Keep working those quadriceps on the fronts of your thighs. Other added bonus of working those quadriceps is it tends to keep your knees from locking. And you wanna stretch your muscles, not strain your joints. So keeping those knees unlocked will help keep those joints from hyperextending. Strong quadriceps, long hamstrings. And then straightening your arms. Still in this wide-legged forward fold, still with those thighs working, heels out, toes in, knees unlocked. Plant your right hand directly beneath your nose. And with an inhale, sweep your left arm up and open, revolving. You can come up onto fingertips, get a little bit more rotation. And switch. Left hand down, right arm up. Big twist. And release. Keep paying attention to those thighs. Work them both equally. Twist the other way. And switch. Second side, second time. Big rotation. And release. All right, you're gonna heel toe, wiggle your feet closer to one another. And turn your toes out. And then shift your weight back towards your heels. Be able to wiggle your toes. Shifting weight to your heels. You're gonna come on down and cop a squat. Now you can modify this. If your knees don't bend so well, or if it's a little much, you can put a little something underneath your hips. Take some of the load off. Everybody's pelvis is slightly different. Some people like a wide turned out squat, feet turned out to the sides, knees wide apart. Other people's hips prefer a more narrow, more parallel squat. So you might play around with bringing your feet in a little closer, turning your toes forward. Whatever squat you choose, 
you do want your heels to touch something. So if your heels don't touch down, um, try wider first. That might work for you. If you can keep your heels down and move your feet more narrow, your legs more narrow, that works too, whatever works for you. Other modifications you can make is to take a rolled up sticky mat or the edge of a pillow and put a little something something underneath your heels. Make the pose more accessible because you wanna be able to shift weight into your heels without you falling over. So you do want your heels down on something so you can shift your weight back. So again, we're stretching those Achilles tendons on the back of the ankles. And then come back down to hands and knees, patting beneath your knees. Hands beneath your shoulders, toes curled under. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. Inhale for cow. And exhale for cat. Can you add in that arm stuff from earlier? Inhale for cow, show me your elbow pits. Tickly armpit position. And then as you exhale, flare those armpits wide, come into that cat pose. Feeling those arm bones rotating in the shoulder joints as you move back and forth through cat and cow. Shoulders hunch up by your ears in that cat pose. Shoulders move away from your ears in your cow. So this action in the arms, you can mirror it. You can do a very similar analog movement in the hips. So the next time you exhale into that cat pose, take a moment to untuck your toes. Once again, back your hips up to your heels and walk your hands up onto your lap and have a quick look. In a moment, you'll be back here on hands and knees. And in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to locate your thighs. Remember the quadriceps on the front, hamstrings on the back. The side line, that side seam, the racing stripe on the outside of your pant legs. Well, you also have one on the inseam. The inseam, the inside of your thighs. When you're coming into this cat and cow, I'm gonna ask you to rotate your thighs, keep your heels apart, your toes curled under. When you come into your cat pose, you're gonna rotate your inner thighs in. So your inseams will push back. And then when you come into your cow, you're gonna try keeping those sit bones wide. When you come into your cow, keep those inner thighs pressing back, the stripes on the outside of your pant legs rolling forward. If your legs were the meters on a hand mixer, like Christmas time, you're making cake at home, mixing up some recipes, you're letting those rotation, the rotation of the inner thighs be such that you're shooting cake batter through your legs back behind you. Coming to hands and knees, we'll do some more cat and cow and we'll get those hips involved. So inhaling into your cow, stick out your butt. And as you exhale into cat, press those inner thighs back. Let the racing stripes on the outside of your pant legs roll forward. Let your heels spread. Inhale into cow, sit bones wide, heels spread even more. Keep working. So back and forth through cat and cow, your legs are rotating the same way for both poses. When you come into that cow, it's really easy to spread your heels, spread those sit bones. You might be tempted to take your knees wider apart, but don't let them travel anywhere. Keep your knees narrow as you move back and forth through cat and cow and really begin to pry your hips open. The ultimate variation on this is to work your hips and your arms at the same time. So if it makes enough sense for you to do it, you can try it. When you come into your cow, your elbow pits shine forward, your sit bones are wide, your heels are wide. When you exhale into cat, your elbow points shine forward, your heels are wide, your sit bones are wide, your belly pulls up strong and keep moving back and forth through cat and cow, prying open your shoulders and your hips.
And exhale, coming into that cat pose. Untuck your toes, press your hips back to your heels for that child's pose once again. If you haven't already, get something and put it underneath your knees. This next one, you're definitely gonna want some padding underneath your knees. Because once again, you're gonna step forward with your right foot. Again, try doing it without hands. Coming into a nice long, low lunge. Do have those blocks nearby. You might even have a belt nearby. I'm gonna come into a nice low lunge. Notice I've got back, back toes pointed. Take this front foot, wiggle it wide. It can get even travel off the side of your yoga mat. Both hands are gonna to come to the inside, arch side of that front foot. And you're gonna get low into your lunge. Front foot turns out like you did for that squat. Toes turning out to the side. Lowering your chest, maybe coming elbows down onto blocks or elbows onto the floor. Might have that belt handy. If this is your right foot, you're gonna put your left elbow down on something so that your right hand is free, twisting towards the bent knee. And release, back it up. And again, try to switch sides without using your hands. Mm -hmm. Front foot turns out, big angle. If this is your left knee, you're gonna work on getting that right elbow down on a block or the floor so that you could turn towards the bent knee. Big twist. Notice my foot is turned out at an angle. And release. All right, you're gonna switch sides. I am going to do this pointing in the same direction you are, hopefully. This will make a bit more sense to you. So right foot turned out. This time, you know, put work on putting that right hand, that right elbow down as you sweep your left arm up and open. You'll notice as you do this, you tend to fall to the inside of that knee and maybe your back big toe points off to the side of the room. And release. And switch. Without using your hands, if you can. Left leg out. Notice I'm completely off the yoga mat here with this left foot. Twist away from the front leg. Opening up. You might find that you're coming to the inside inseam of that back leg. And release. Before we switch sides, I wanted to show you from the rear view here. And curl the back toes under, lift the back knee up, and swing that back knee in narrow. You're looking at my dress right now, so I'm going to be shy and drop the pocket change out of that right hip pocket down to the floor and try setting the outer right kneecap down. Now on the pinky toe side of that right foot. I'm going to take this right elbow back down to the mat, back down to the floor, and again, lift this left arm up. So I haven't switched legs. I've just rotated my torso the other way. I'm on the pinky toe side of this right leg. Big rotation, big twist. The more twist you can get, the more you can rotate open, the more likely you are to one day reach back, grab a hold of your big toe. Now you might need to use a belt to help you lasso that foot or work on more twist to reach back, take hold of it. Big quadricep stretch, if you still know where your quadricep is. Uh, 
and release. Untangle, <laughs> rearrange. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. You might want to have your blocks, your toys, everything handy. Get this right leg out to the side here. Curl the back toes under, lift that left knee up, swing it in towards midline. You might do that two or three times. Work it across the midline of your mat. You can even wiggle the front foot out to the side even more. And we're putting your left elbow, your left shoulder down on the ground. Something on the left side comes down towards the ground as you reach up and you twist. The more you can rotate your chest, the more of the left side line you can get down on the floor, the more likely you are to reach down and grab hold of that big toe one day. Big twist. And unwind. Gonna unwind all the way around into your wide legged forward fold. Wide legged forward fold. Knees unlocked. Right hand comes down to the floor, directly beneath your nose, and come up onto fingertips. Sweep that left arm up and open, big rotation, big twist. And switch, left hand down, right arm up. Big rotation, big twist. And release. Nice way, wide legged forward fold. Knees unlocked, toes turned in, heels kick out. Sweep your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, press your knuckles up towards the sky. And hands come to your hips, hands come down to the floor. And then come down, finish the way we started. Come down into your child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart, hips back on your heels, curling up into a ball. Walking your hands back to your lap. You get to turn over and lie down on your back. Bring one knee at a time. Both knees come into your chest. Let's turn this into a happy baby. Running your hands up the inside of your legs to hold on to the calves, the arches of your feet, maybe even take two fingers, your peace fingers around your big toes. And take your happy baby side to side, pulling down on one leg and then pulling down on the other to set yourself rocking side to side.
bring the bottom of your feet together. If your arms are long enough, you might be able to reach your hands around the pinky toe sides of your feet and interlace your fingers together. Otherwise, use the belt. Knees go wide, feet are together. Hips thin, head and shoulders stay down. So if you find that your chin is jutting up higher than your nose, you definitely need a block or a pillow underneath your head. You wanna be able to breathe, have a conversation in this position. So if this feels choky, if it's difficult to swallow, difficult to breathe, you wanna put a pillow or block underneath your head. Also wanna check in with those shoulders, make sure they relax away from your ears. Big belly breaths. And from here, bring your legs together. Open your arms out like airplane wings. Again, with a big inhale. And as you exhale, take both knees over to the right. Knees went to the right. That means your left shoulder might be floating up off the mat. Take this top hand, this left arm over towards your knees and scooch your hips back a little bit, rearrange your shoulders so that you're really lying on your right side completely. Stack one hand on top of the other. Your hips are stacked one on top of the other. Everything is stacked. And then with an inhale, sweep that left arm open across the sky like a rainbow. And reset. Inhale, sweep that right arm open across. This is your left arm open across the sky. And reset. One more time. Big inhale, sweeping that left arm open across the sky like a rainbow. And reset. Lifting with the top knee, the bottom knee, the top arm, the bottom arm. Roll all the way over to the other side. Now lie on your left side, stacking hips and shoulders, stacking everything up. Reach through that top arm, open across the sky like a rainbow, rolling open. And reset. You get to do this three times to roll. I like to take a big inhale as I open, open, open. And third time, big inhale, open, 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 open. And reset. This final time, just let everything roll open. Lying flat out on your back. Make a giant X, reaching through fingers, reaching through toes. Snow angel your arms down by your hips. And you could stay here in Shavasana classic or if it's more comfortable for you if you want to try a variation put the bottom of your feet together butterfly pose variation sleeping butterfly supta baddha konasana 